Hey Signal Online, I'm Julia and I'm here with Mike Reese, writer and producer for The Simpsons and the featured speaker for Cubs Welcome Back Lecture. So, I don't know if I should thank you for contributing something that's so integral to American culture or blame you for the amount of couch potatoes that we have in this country. <laughs> I am the cause of America's obesity you are. epidemic. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, when you started working on The Simpsons, what were your initial goals for the show? I swear, nobody believes when we started the show, Every, I asked everybody working there, it was a small group, I said, how long do you think this is going to last? And everyone goes, six weeks. Mm -hmm. I we had that, yeah. We all let everyone go, six weeks. And it was sort of almost a compliment, because there were always shows we used to like on mm -hmm. TV that would go six weeks and out, and we, because they just didn't have broad appeal. So that was it. Because we thought nobody would be watching the show, we really just had fun. It was mm -hmm. just a summer job, and we really had a ball doing it. And, we didn't work very long hours, and the whole staff would sneak out and go to the movies oh. in the afternoon. And that was it. And then it came on the air mm -hmm. and was immediately a hit. I mean, and three weeks after it came on the air, it was the cover of Newsweek, and that's, that's it. It just never stopped after that. So it was only that short time where we thought, hey, this is just for fun. And what do you think it was about The Simpsons that really got the public so interested in it? Uh, what I... You know, there's no single answer. Mm -hmm. I wish there was some glib one, you know, key to it. But mm -hmm. I think it's good in every aspect of it. I think the writing is good. Mm -hmm. I think our, our voice actors are still amazing to me. I've worked with these people for 23 years, and I can't believe Bart's voice is coming mm -hmm. out of this grown woman. <laughs> and that, Or that, uh, you know, any one of our guy actors does 30 different characters. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're amazing, and our animators are great. Our animators are great and get better all the time. And, and there was just something very basically appealing about the look mm -hmm. of it. And where do you get your ideas for the characters and their misadventures from? We get them from everywhere. I mean, it's a real experience suck <laughs> working on that show. It's, we use things that happen in our real lives, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff that's going on in the paper, mm -hmm. things in the news, we parody movies we've mm -hmm. seen. and. And then just the, just the very few ideas are things we just make up out of the blue. Okay. Any characters are based on any particular people? Or? That I don't think so. That okay. I can't th Except for, again, it's embarrassing to say, there are characters we just plain stole. It's like Professor Frank on the show. It's, he's just stolen from an old Jerry Lewis movie. Oh. He's the, nutty, the original nutty professor. Mm -hmm. That's Professor Frank. And uh, the character of Gil... If you know who Gil is, Gil is just Jack Lemmon in the movie Glen Gary, Glen Ross. Okay. And you've also co-created The Critic, and you're behind the Simpsons movie Horton Hears a Who and Ice Age Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Correct. So what draws you to writing for animated comedies? Uh, it's not, uh, not a joke to say I don't like writing for real people. Okay. It's tough to deal with actors. Mm -hmm. They have big egos. Mm -hmm. they, they can be crabby. Mm -hmm. But animation... Animation is certainly, you, you don't have that problem with actors, and, you know, you it lets you do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, they can do anything. Like they can do work. anything. I mean, it's things people aren't aware of, like when you're writing for a real TV show, mm -hmm. if you want to say, oh, they go to a bookstore, mm -hmm. well, somebody's got to build a bookstore and mm -hmm. fill it with 10,000 books, mm -hmm. and it's only there for two minutes, and then they've got to take it all down, but mm -hmm. in animation, it's easy. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's great to build a bookstore. <laughs> And why is comedy, in your opinion, so important? Why? I don't know. I, uh, I, it makes people happy. I don't think it's that important. It's just, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm glad there's a job doing it, because <laughs> I just, I can make up jokes, and I would be doing this if I was a lawyer, but it's good for the world I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> and what advice would you give for aspiring writers? Uh, they've just got to work really, really right. hard. They've got to take every line and every... They've got to really sweat over every joke mm -hmm. and every line and take their time mm -hmm. with it. So now I have the most important question that I'm going to ask you. Okay, where is Springfield? Uh, no, not oh, that okay. one. I, I know the answer to that one. Okay. So, um, Don't tell me. <laughs> I know a spider pig does whatever a spider oh, pig for does. Sake. Yeah. <laughs> but what does it actually do? I don't know. That's, <laughs> I, when I heard that joke, I thought, this is the stupidest joke I've ever heard in my life. And, it's there, a it, hit. It, I mean, it, it was so big, that spider pig joke, you know, I always say, the Simpsons movie had 11 writers and 9 directors, we did 165 drafts of the script, 
And all anyone cares about is spider pig. <laughs> One dumb joke that they made up at like 11 at night. I mean, it's the kind of joke you make yeah. up when you're really punchy and you're just, well, we'll throw it in. Yeah. But, wow, people love that spider pig. Yeah. And they love it in other countries, too. Oh, my goodness. In France, it was the number one ringtone. Really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right, yeah. well, thanks so much for meeting with us. And oh, thank you for clearing pleasure. that up. Yes. <laughs> Sorry to get huffy. <laughs>